So this is a crazy problem. We've got this wire that's sort of bent like this and another wire going into the page there. We're actually trying to figure out what the angle of this wire is. And uh, that's based, we have to figure out like that based off of the graph that we have here, which is giving us the total B squared, like the actual B squared of that point, And then also um, the I squared, I two squared over here. Um, so in order to figure out what the total magnetic field is at the point, um, we kind of have to do a little bit of calculation. We have to add this and then also add that and then add this and then also add that. So there's like four different things we're going to add up together because they all have influence on this point. Um, we're going to sort of use the, uh, the, the DS cross R to kind of imagine what's going on here because Remember that the R vector was like this, and uh, for both of these edges over here, the R vector is actually lined up with the current vector. So since it's gonna be the cross product here, is that's the sine, and this would be zero degrees, and this would be 180 degrees. So these things will actually just like cancel out. They won't have any impact on that center. So that gets rid of the sides. Now let's focus now on this arch that we have here. We actually have a simple, formula that we can use, we've derived this before, that uh, for the center of an arc, we can use this formula. I will call it B1 because it's from current one, and we'll just say that is uh, mu naught I1. We need the theta, and we're gonna be looking at four pi uh, times the R. And then for B2, uh, that's gonna be here, a very long wire, it's kind of infinite. We have a formula for that as well. That's going to be mu naught i2 divided by uh, 2 pi d. And that, that, well, we could say it's an r. It's going to be the length away from it is going to be the radius. So that's pretty nice. Um, all right, so we've kind of got our two important equations here. Now we could try to gauge what's going on in this graph. There's a couple of really important points, this one right here, because at that point, I2 is equal to zero. And if I2 equals zero, that means that B2 is also equal to zero. And if we wanna figure out again what that point is over there, let's try to do that cross product now. Um, we'll start with our thing going that way. We're curling inwards, and we would get a B going in the up direction if we were to follow that. So this is from, uh, this is B1. And then we also look at I2, that's going into the page, crossing this direction, and so therefore we would get the B going this way. So this is actually B2. And so now we actually have one coming into the Z, one going up in the Y. If we're gonna try to combine those two, we're gonna need to like square them. We can't just add them up easily. So we're just gonna go like um, the total B, squared equals b1 squared plus b2 squared. That's how we can add those vectors in there and get this equation now. So this is great because now let's go back to this one. B i2, i2 equals zero and b2 equals zero. Um, and let's plug that into this equation, right? And so we could figure out that the net b is gonna be equal to 1.24, 1.24 e to negative 10 if b1 squared plus 0 squared is true. We can get rid of that, and we see that b1 is actually just uh, this. So we can kind of square root of that, and we'll figure out what b1 is. So that's nice. And this is going to help for later. But this is another point that's pretty interesting. When i2 equals 2, and so if, or sorry, when i2 equals 1, if i2 equals 1, then that means that we can use the b2 formula that we found over here but we'll just get rid of the i because it's just oh, it's just a one. So we'll say b2 is uh, mu naught two pi r. And um, well, now we can kind of plug that into the equation as well because we should also get the net b at that point, which would be 7.44. So let's see what that gives us. Um, if we say 7.44 e to the negative 10, the net equals, it's always gonna be b1 is that, so 1.24 e to the negative 10, uh, we'll square it so it's just that, and then plus 
the b's 2 squared, which would be mu naught over 2 pi r squared. Now we can actually solve for this r. Let's go ahead and do that. We will basically subtract this from that. Get like 7.44, negative 10, minus 1.24. 6.2, and then that's going to equal that. Let's go ahead and square it, and then so the square root of that equals mu naught over 2 pi r. Put the r over here, and then divide that over there. So you kind of get that r equals mu naught over 2 pi times the square root of 6.2, even negative 10, etc. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go 4, negative 7 times the pi. Well, we'll get rid of the pi because there's no, no pi on top. Um, so the mu naught on top, and then we'll say 2 times the um, I think it would be the square root of the 6.2 get the negative 10. And I think that should give us the answer here. So that will give us the radius. R equals 8.03, negative 3. Okay. Now, from here, let's go back into our B1 equation. And all we got to do is just rearrange this a little bit. Because we know B1. B1 is the square root of this. So we can essentially say that the square root of 1.24 e to negative 10 is equal to mu naught, and we know what that 0.76i is right there, and we're going to do the theta there, get divided by 4 pi, and 8.03 e to negative 3. So, rearranging that, we should be able to solve for theta here. Let's put 4 pi... Um, and that thing on the other side. So we'll just kind of set this up like this. Square root of 1.24, negative 10. Um, on the bottom, we can point, we can put this stuff. This will go on the bottom. 4e to negative 7. Let's get rid of the pi. And then times 0.76. And on the top, we're not done. We're going to multiply it by 4 and 8.03, which was our answer. And there we go. We found that the theta is 1.177 radians. All right.